and welcome back to the next episode of Net Know the Network Show. So this this one, this one's close to my heart, right? So this episode is all about what I call network diversity. And to explain what I'm talking about, I want to tell you a little story. So sit back and relax, get some snacks if you wish. There once was a man named Galileo. Galileo, Galileo. Uh, little song for you You're welcome. And... Um, so anyway, Galileo, so Galileo did lots of things in his time. He discovered lots of wonderful things, made lots of discoveries and innovations. Um, he was a scientist, a philosopher, an astronomer. And one of the things that Galileo did is he discovered that the moon has mountains. So before Galileo came along, we all thought the moon was this perfectly round sphere floating up in the sky. And along comes Galileo and he says, no, no, my friends, the moon has mountains and craters. And they were all shocked. <gasps> They thought he was a witch and they locked him away, but he wasn't. He was telling the bloody truth. And how was Galileo able to recognize that the moon has mountains? Did he have like a super strong telescope that allowed him to look really, really closely at the moon? No, no, he did not. Maybe he, maybe he had access to Google. He went on the internet, Googled it, and then went around and told everybody else. No, no, he did not. Or maybe... Maybe Galileo was a time traveler. Maybe he came into the future, find out the moon has got mountains and craters, and then go back and spoiled it for everyone. You can guess what I'm going to say. No, no, my friends, he did not. Galileo was able to recognize that the moon has mountains and craters by looking through the exact same telescope with access to the exact same information as everyone else because he had... Give me a drum roll, please. I'm going to do my own. Diverse knowledge. It was diverse knowledge that allowed him to recognize that what he was seeing, those shadows through the exact same telescope as everyone else, were these mountains and craters. It was his knowledge in geography that allowed him to recognize this. But the problem is that often in the world, we all become experts in just one thing, which is wonderful. But at the same time, we miss out on all this wonderful knowledge an experience that exists outside of our area of expertise. Fun fact, um, scientists who have hobbies outside their area of expertise, especially in like Amdram and stuff, don't know why, um, but they're like three times more likely to win a Nobel Prize, which is pretty impressive. Um, so diverse knowledge, really, really easy, quick way to come up with new ideas, to spot things and see things in different from different perspectives, hence the diversity. But it's not often something we focus on. And there's a couple of reasons for this, so especially when it comes to, to building our networks. So research, loads of research has shown that one of the most valuable things that we get from our networks is this access to knowledge, access to information. But when it comes to going out and connecting with people and having conversations, um, we all tend to kind of stay in our own lanes. So there's a phenomenon called homophily, which is basically that birds of a feather flock together. We're all drawn to people who are similar to us. We speak the same language. We have things in common. It's easy to have conversations. It's safer. We build trust with people that we've got things in common with. So when we meet someone that does the same thing as us, or they think the same way as we do. We share the same religious beliefs. We're from, ge geography is actually really big on this. So if you've ever been on holiday and you meet someone from the same place as you, you're like, oh, are you from there? I'm from there. Do you know so-and-so? Oh, I know them. Do you ever drink in this pub? Yeah, I was there just the other week. And you instantly become best friends. They could be a horrible human being, but you instantly trust them because you're from the same location. It's this. It's a very powerful thing, commonality. Um, but when it comes to yeah, going out networking, we are naturally drawn to and find it easier to connect and communicate with people who think the same way as us. And um, also by default, you know, if you work in tech, you probably go to a lot of tech events and speak to other people that work in tech. If you are a business person, you maybe go to a lot of business events, speak to other business people. If you're an academic, you go to academic events and go to and connect with other people in academia and so on and so forth. So by default, you naturally build networks with people who are in the same area, same field, same sector as you. And it also makes us feel safe in environments that, you know, networking events we know aren't the most naturally comfortable places to be. So what tends to happen is, is that we build these networks of people who think the way that we think, 
who have access to the same information and knowledge as us, and they see the world pretty similar to us. And as easy as that may be, it also can be absolutely detrimental to the pool of knowledge that we're creating for ourselves. Because if you go out and you only speak to people who know the things that you already know, you're never going to learn anything new. I'm going to say that again for dramatic effect. If you only speak to people who know the things that you know, you will never learn anything new. And you create this really small pool of knowledge and access and resources when actually what we need to do is start breaking down those barriers and look for ways in which we can step out, yes, of our comfort zone, but it's also stepping out of that little bubble and start networking with, talking to, learning from people who do different things to us. So if you're a business person, you need, to, you need to be speaking to people in tech because they are the future. The geek shall inherit the earth, my friends. Just watch, it's going to happen. But you need to go and speak to the people in tech. The techies, you need to go and speak to the, the charities. You need to speak to the accountants, the lawyers, the solicitors. We need to speak to the academic. You need to speak to everyone. If you're an academic, you need to get out there. The literature is not enough. Don't just look for the gaps in there. We need to go out and make sure that what we're researching what impact is it going to have? Who are the people that you're looking to impact? Go and talk to them. Do they care if you research this thing? Will it affect their lives? Will it help them? It's not enough to just be on our own in our own little bubble in our own little space and become experts. It's wonderful to do that, yeah, and it's probably going to feel comfortable and safe. But actually, the real innovation, the real exciting knowledge transfer, game-changing stuff that happens when we get uncomfortable and we go and talk to people who know different things, they see the world differently, they've got different experiences to share, and then we can pull in on that, we can learn from them. There are going to be barriers, I'm not going to lie. So communication is often a massive barrier for this. So, and when I say communication, I don't necessarily mean like what language you speak. I mean more like the acronyms that you use. So like I spent like three years working in tech and it took me about a year and a half to figure out what anyone was saying, to be honest with you. Everything's an acronym and IOT and AR, VR, um, XR, whatever. Um, but then to be fair, you know, going into academia now, you all speak a whole completely different language and you use words and I'm often saying, I've got no idea what that means. Um, please say it in a different way. Um, and I think going into a networking environment, one with the headset, you know, we're not there to sell, we're there to learn. That can be an absolute game changer. It means that you, you don't have the pressure of trying to sell yourself to people and you don't have the pressure of trying to be the expert in the room because you're there to learn. So proper random example, but my little one starts school in September. And the other day she was saying how like she doesn't know her ABCDs. Bless her, she says ABCD. I love that she adds the D on the end. Anyway, um, she's like, but I don't know my ABCDs. And I'm like, do you know you don't need to know them, lass? That's why you're going to school. You're going to school to learn them. And this is what networking should be as well. It's not, you're not going in that room and you're going to get grilled and you have to know everything. And, you know, you have to be the expert on everything. The point is you're there to learn from other people that know things that you don't. And if someone happens to ask you a question about your, your field, your, your research, your industry, and you don't know the answer, then that's a great like bit of research. And you can say, oh, do you know what? I don't know that. And I've not thought about it that way before. I'm going to go and find out. Give me an email address and I'll let you know. And then go off and research it and find it. And it, it makes you better at what you do, as well as learning from people who see the world and experience it differently from you. So when it comes to networking, you are naturally going to connect with people who think the way that you do. And that's totally fine. There is absolutely a call for that, especially if you are starting a business, for example. It's great to connect with other people who are starting a business at the same time as you. Um, you go through that journey together. You've got peers that you can share that experience with. It's like when you go on maternity leave, if you have a kid, um, you become friends with other people who have just had a kid as well and you go through the trauma together. Starting a business is just the same. Um, so there's absolutely a place for that, having those peer-to-peer -peer relationships. It's equally as important though, and it's really important to be mindful of having some kind of strategy in place to make sure that you are going out and networking and building a diverse network as much as possible to learn and see things from different perspectives 
that spark those amazing innovative ideas, just like with Galileo. Um, and you never know where it's going to lead. And that's where the exciting stuff happens. Collaborations happen, innovations themselves, new products, new services are created. Um, and you just, yeah, you just never know where it's going to go. So thinking strategically about it, being mindful of it, and then putting yourself in a position every now and again that makes you feel a little uncomfortable. I did it a few weeks ago myself, signed up to do a one day agriculture course. I have got absolutely, like literally my plants are from Ikea. I kill things. Um, but that was part of the reason I wanted to go, wanted to learn how to keep some plants alive. Um, I absolutely have no interest in that area professionally at all. However, the opportunity arose. I was like, yeah, do you know what? I'll do that. And I learned so much stuff. And I interestingly learned a lot of stuff that I then have since applied into business. Stuff that I would never, you know, about ecosystems and the fact that, um, I'm going off on a tangent, but I'm rolling with it. Um, ecosystems within agriculture, a lot of people like get uh, an allotment and they're like, right, I want to grow um, carrots and potatoes and I want to grow cauliflower because I love to eat it. And then they plant it and then it doesn't work. And actually what you should do is look and take some time. And the first thing when you get the allotment is to just watch what's growing there already. Is it wet? Is it dry? Is there like shade half the day? Which bits are sunny? Which bits are not? And then plant the stuff that actually is going to work there rather than the stuff you want to be there. And in business, I think that's really applicable and looking at ecosystems that exist and what's happening naturally already rather than trying to force things on, trying to recreate Silicon Valley in Carlisle, for example. It's probably not going to work. It's a different location. The people are different. The environment's different. So what's already happening in that city, in that location and what businesses could thrive? Totally went down a rabbit hole with that one. But I like that. So yeah, I went to an agriculture course. I learned some new stuff, nothing to do with what I'm working on. However, it actually gave me some insight, allowed me to see things from a different perspective. And that's what network diversity can do. So have a think about how diverse your network is currently. What could you be doing and where could you be going and who could you be speaking to that's going to help you create that more rounded, diverse access to knowledge and information and see where it leads you. Hopefully down another rabbit hole. Right, that's it for this episode. Hope it sparked some ideas. Um, let me know how diverse your network is. Currently, what are you working on at the moment? And when did you last step out of your comfort zone? Let me know in the comments, get in touch, and obviously make sure you subscribe to the show so that you can find out when the next episode is live. And I shall see you there. A Liquid Studios production.